Greetings, and welcome to another installment from the Patchwork Productions Learn to Crochet for Beginners series. In this video, you will learn how to do the waistcoat stitch. For those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Stitch, and Patchwork Productions is all about learning and doing crochet. So make sure you subscribe so you never miss another installment. Without further ado, let's get started. So for this video, we are going to be learning how to make a new pattern stitch. Um, although to be honest, I wonder if you can even call it a pattern stitch. Because this pattern is very, very simple. It may even be simpler than some of the last pattern stitch videos that we've done. Which if you haven't seen those, I encourage you to check those out. Um, but this one is going to be the waistcoat stitch. Don't ask me why it's named that, because I actually didn't look into that. But basically, the pattern behind this stitch is working into the post of single crochets. Yes, the very thing that I said didn't really have a post. We are going to be working into the post of a single crochet. Uh, out of all the elementary stitches, single crochets are usually less referred to as having posts. But, to be honest, all stitches, at least the elementary stitches, have posts. They're just smaller. Maybe the only stitch you could say doesn't have a post of the elementary stitches would be the slip stitch. Um, but, you know, maybe I might find I'm wrong about that too. But the point is, when you work the waistcoat stitch, Instead of working back under the V's of the stitch, you work into the posts of the stitch, which still resembles V's, but it's a slightly different place. So to begin the waistcoat stitch, uh, I'll begin with a foundation chain of 10 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then 1 plus for our turning chain. And the first row will just be a row of single crochets. So I'll make this row of single crochets. And just as a word of advice, make your single crochets loosely. And you'll see why later. All right, so we have our first row of single crochets. So we're going to chain one. We're going to turn our work. And here's where the fun begins. So if you look closely, you can see the tiny little posts that each of these single crochets has. Right there's a post, right there's a post. So all those are posts. And as you can see, there are micro V's. That's what I'm gonna call them, micro V's. Right there, that's the V, that's a V. Um, now we generally refer to these as V's and they look a lot more like V's, but the posts do have something that resemble it. That is what we're going to work into. Now, the reason I said to loose, um, to, the, to crochet loosely for your first row and for all the rows is because those posts will be very hard to work back into if you don't uh, make the, the stitches loose. So it's advised to stitch loosely. Also, um, if you're still having trouble with this kind of a stitch, they also recommend that you use a hook that's slightly larger in size. So in this case, I'm using a 5.75 millimeter hook, a USJ-10. I could switch to something more like a uh, 6.5 millimeter hook or a USJ uh, K-10.5. Um, so just as an example, if I was having trouble, I would switch to this hook because it'd make the stitches a lot looser uh, naturally and I would be able to get my hook in there a lot easier. I'm gonna stick with my J10 hook, uh, but feel free to switch if you'd like. And so now, into the first stitch, you're gonna work a normal single crochet under the regular Vs. Now, you don't have to do this. If you know how to get that post of that first single crochet at the edge, feel free to, to work into it, um, but most times it's easier to just do that first single crochet as a regular single crochet. Now into the post of the next single crochet. So if you look, 
this is where you would see the V's for the next single crochet, right? Right there is the V. But right in front of it is the post. And so you're going to work into the post of the single crochet right through the V's. So if you can see there, right there is where you're going to work into. You've got to find it, and you're just going to have to poke your way through. Uh, let's see if I can get my hook under right there. And then you just work the single crochet like normal. As you can see, we worked into the post of the single crochet. So the next stitch, you're going to do the exact same thing. You're going to find the V's that are there, and you're going to work right through that post. So it should look like a little, a little black dot for the shadow <laughs> that's in between there, and you work straight into it right there. So you're going to find that one, go through, and make a single crochet and then you just keep doing that so basically the waistcoat stitch is working into the center now here I ran into a little problem I inserted my hook there but I got a snag I ran into some yarn I wasn't supposed to so you want to be careful and if you have that problem be sure to take your the stitch out and do it again so that you don't catch the wrong things so you want to make sure you're going through only those V's, only through the post, so that you don't catch anything else that you shouldn't pick up along the way. So I'm going to finish this row, and then we'll see what we do at the end. So we're here at the end, and you have a choice again to make. There's one last stitch to do. You can either work into the post of that last stitch, which the working to the post of the last stitch is easier, so you can do it. Um, or if you want to keep it consistent with the other side, which I'll do just for the sake of consistency, just work a regular single crochet into the last stitch. So just under the two V's like normal, not through the post. So this is how we work this. And then for row two, very simple. Just chain one and turn your work again into that first single crochet uh, we're gonna work in the a regular stitch regular single crochet and then into the remaining stitches we're gonna work into the post now let me just undo that and count the stitches for a second so I can show you guys something so let's take out our chain one and let's count how many stitches we had. We had a foundation uh, chain of 10 stitches plus our turning chain, so 11 stitches. And so we should have 10 stitches uh, by V count up top here. So excluding our loop, of course, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we do have 10 here, so we know we worked the right amount of stitches. And again, the waistcoat stitch can be worked in as many different number of foundation chains. It does not wreck the pattern because of how it's done. It's basically just single crochets worked into the center of the post. So now, when we uh, chain one and turn our work, we want to keep an eye on something. We're going to do what we did the last time, which is work into the first single crochet like a normal single crochet, just under the two V's. And now we need to make sure that we don't add any extra stitches because it can happen on accident. So we have one single crochet here. Let's count the remaining stitches we have and then remount, count the remaining posts. So we have one, that's the one we made, then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So we're going to count this again. We're going to take this out make sure we count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay chain one work this one so we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so let's count the posts we have a post that's here, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine. I guess you could say nine. So when we're working into the next row, we want to make sure we don't accidentally, after going into that regular single crochet, work into a post that will then add a stitch. You always want to count to make sure that you're not working double stitches in different places because each of these V's is associated or paired with a post. So if you work into the V and the post, you're going to get an extra stitch. So you always want to make sure you're counting your stitches. Um, but in this case, we can just work into that first post that we see and we will be fine. And if we look here, we can see that this has created a new kind of V. The ones at the bottom were a little harder to see, but as you go up in rows, it's actually easier to notice. So if you can see here, the V, it has a larger larger spread that we can just insert our, in, our hook into a lot more freely. Right there, and I'm already in that V. Then I just work a regular single crochet. So from here on out, working into the V is gonna be a lot easier. Also, um, this is a part of the count. Don't be fooled. The V's we're going to be working into are technically upside down. I uh, guess you could call them A's. Um, but if you see a V that looks more like this one right here, that is the V's that you'd normally be working under because it's associated with the V's up here. That's not the one you want to work into. So you want to make sure you look for the V's that's actually the post of the stitch and not the space where you would normally work a, a single crochet. So you always want to keep an eye on that. The V's that are upside down where you have to flip them like this to actually look like the letter V, those are the ones that you're going to be working into. So keep a close eye out for that. So again, the waistcoat stitch is very simple. You just work into those V's um, the into the center of the post and you make regular single crochets except they're just worked into the center of the post. So I will work some more uh, rows that we can get a larger swatch, um, or you could say a mini swatch, and uh, I'll show you what this looks like when it is completed. All right, so this is a larger swatch of the waistcoat stitch. And if I can show you nice and close, it's a little hard to see, but uh, this stitch has another name, which is the knit stitch, because um, in places where it's easier to see, <laughs> um, this resembles the way knitting looks when you finish, how the, the little V's in knitting, the little stitches, kind of go up in lines like this. This does resemble that kind of look, and if I can show you up close here you can see this is what it looks like so something else that's very nice about the waistcoat stitch is it is an extremely sturdy stitch because you're working into those posts so this doesn't have much stretch um, it, when it has a twist in it the twist gives a lot of force to you so blocking would probably be a good idea for any project that has that uses the waistcoat stitch so that it can keep its proper form um, so just as a quick demonstration again, I'll show you how to do this, beginning another row. So we're going to work into that first stitch like a normal single crochet. And then we're going to find that first post and work into it. And then work a normal single crochet. Going to find the next post right there and work into it. We're going to work a single crochet, find the next post, go into it, work a single crochet, get some more yarn out. Then we're just going to keep doing this. And perhaps you can see as I make it what I mean by that V, because this turns into this. And so it kind of makes that V-ish kind of a style going straight up. So, and remember the posts are the, are the V's that kind of look upside down. So this one right here, how the V is marked going kind of like that. This one right here, that is going to be a post. But the one here where the V kind of looks like it's 
actually a V when it's facing you, that's not the one you want to work into. It's the one right here. Another way to identify it is by this thick strap. I call it a strap. That's going right above the, the V. So this is the one you want to work into because it's the center of the post. Whoopsie. And so then the last stitch, you can find the V, the, the, the post, but I'm just gonna work straight into the last one like a regular single crochet, because that's what I've been doing for the rest of the uh, for the rest of the rows that I've done. So that's how you work this one. So yeah, the waistcoat waistcoat stitch does go by uh, another name, the knit stitch, just because of how it can resemble. Also, you might hear it referred to as the center post stitch, which makes sense. Um, I don't know why it's also called the waistcoat stitch. But yes, it is a very, very sturdy stitch. Um, I do like it for that. And uh, it's pretty easy to make. The edges are a little bit hectic, but depending on the project, you won't need to worry about that especially if you know how to make some awesome borders, um, which I've made a border video that if you haven't seen, I encourage you to check that out. It's the crab stitch. Um, so yes, this is how you make the waistcoat stitch. Another stitch for you, pattern stitch, very easy one. Uh, again, as a reminder, if you're having trouble making this, two things you can do. Uh, make your stitches looser, and also use a slightly larger hook um, than you might normally use or one that's larger for the recommended yarn. So this is a standard weight for yarn. Um, they usually recommend I9s or, or, um, or J's, but if you use a K or even something a little larger, it'll make working this stitch a lot easier. Um, so just keep that in mind when you choose to make the waistcoat stitch. So other than that, that will be all for this video. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this tutorial and want to learn more about crochet, be sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss another video. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and also share this video with your friends and family or on social media. And feel free to leave a comment down below. If you have any questions or suggestions or any feedback, I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, catch you later.